Well, 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 friends. Hopefully we're all located in the correct location. I'm sick. I have a cold. My getting a cold went like this. I picked my mom up at the end of her vacation when she had a cold. She said, you're not going to get this cold. And I said, that sounds unlikely given the amount of coughing you're doing. Two days later, I very obviously have a cold. And she says, well, that's just your CPAP machine. And I go, no, mom, it's not just my CPAP machine. It's because I spent two hours in a car with you while you were sick. Uh, we had episode quadratic equation. If you skipped it, it was a skippable episode. You missed nothing. Nothing of value happened. <laughs> this man was ducking and diving and dodging. And... I spent half the session under... Uh, never mind. Yeah, I was going to say, he spent most of it ducking, honestly. <laughs> and diving. Ducking and diving. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the crew of the LAS Golden Goose. This may be the last time we see the crew of the LAS Golden Goose. You know, speaking of the last time, this will be the last episode in 2023, and it could be upwards of seven weeks before we meet again, so you better, you better, I don't know, better enjoy it, okay? This succulent yeah. delight. What's that Sing candy nom, from nom. Um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe that the kid oh, betrays? Yeah, Turkish Delight. Turkish Delight, yeah, yeah, Turkish Delight. You better savor this Turkish <laughs> Delight, which, by the way, <laughs> I believe is it a particularly tasty candy? Not in and of itself. No. So yeah, it's like weird. It's like the quadratic rose, equation. Rose water candies. is involved. Why would you slander the quadratic equation? Like you, you said, it wasn't an entertaining episode. <laughs> yeah, but not because it was the quadratic equation. No, listen, don't slander the quadratic. How equation. How dare you slander the math? Yeah. This man, right. I right. want to find the solutions to this problem, both positive and negative, imaginary yeah. and real. Okay. All right. Well, that's fair. It depends. Are you using an I or a J for that imaginary component? <laughs> I'm an electrical engineer. We're using I, obviously. Also, I doesn't show up in the quadratic equation formula at all. It doesn't. But you you just brought up real and imaginary. That's because the quadratic equation has two solutions. Just saying, it should be a J. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. All right. I've given you plenty of time, Dunamis, to think of a goal, because as we got started, you said you didn't have a goal. <laughs> this is true. Uh, I definitely it don't... Mean a goal. I don't want to use the same one I've been using, because I feel like we're making zero progress to it. I don't care how important it is. I so. gotta be honest, speak to Zach is a solid-ass goal you could accomplish this episode. Yeah. Really? Yes. All right. Well, then we'll keep it because I mean it is the most important thing to Van V. It's just we haven't made any progress towards it in a bit. Well, you spent so much time in the Jaleel White Museum of Urkel instead of getting on a damn ship. <laughs> All right. I guess I'll keep it the same then. Did, did we do that? No, oh, no, I wasn't. <laughs> Did I do that? <laughs> See, here's the thing. Urkel is actually one of the top 100 most popular fictional characters of all time. I had never actually seen the show. And so after that episode, I looked it up. Urkel time travels and has alternate selves and makes a copy of himself. What the fuck is that show about? I thought it was about the cop oh, from Die Hard having Just a like family, not like uh, Miss Frizzle popping off. Family what is happening? <laughs> I clearly never saw that episode or series of episodes. I've, I've heard of some of the shenanigans, but I also have not seen the show. Amazing. None of us know shit about Urkel. Oh, no. Family Matters was a part of my life. Certainly. Okay, very well. We got one person <laughs> holding it down here for two Urkels, one of which is a, is like the Chad Sigma Urkel. All right, uh, Quintus, Urkel. I need a goal from you. A goal from me. I would like to celebrate a traditional Leiden holiday of Arbor Day with Zoe and Louis. Anyway, 
anyone else invited or just just you two well it, they're more important than the rest of you the rest of you <laughs> certainly can be there <laughs> just checking it won't be the same for you as it will be for us you know the trees aren't in your hearts yeah i'm not gonna argue that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> Minerva, Minerva, Minerva. I would like to get a spike drive to the hosta. <laughs> da, da, da. Well, your last goal was get a spike drive for the hosta, which you technically have. Nailed so it. I will now change it to get a spike drive to the hosta. Oh. Which, given this group, is still going to be a challenging goal. Yeah, it's yeah, really say. dicey. <laughs> Honestly, like, who can say? This show could be over in six to seven episodes, or it could be over in 20. I really six to don't seven know years. Mm. <laughs> don't get me wrong, though. This is this is probably one of my favorite shows of all time. I really love it. I'm having a blast. Uh, we I might feel just like... spend the entire episode celebrating Arbor Day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like sometimes I come Stop into the show, it. and I'm just like, what is being human? <laughs> Look at all of these different types of being human. What if humans didn't die in two different ways? Are artificial intelligence human? And I feel like I'm doing that the whole time, and I hope I'm not being too annoying about it. <laughs> <laughs> the good tapestry. That was my interpretive dance, by the way. <laughs> Uh, do we have a crew goal? Mm. Uh, mm. The last one I have listed here is to actually acquire the determination. That is still in front of us, although it is directly in front of us. <laughs> and uh, relatively low rent. Uh, I would like to make it a crew goal to get to the hosta if possible. <laughs> Didn't... Uh, I have a note from last time that says we need a spike drive case. Is that some? What is that? What is a case? Uh, upgrade yeah, kit. As long is as you've remembered to get it, it's no problem. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's just we, put the, we put the extra spike oh, drive yeah. in a box so it doesn't mess with the That's right. It doesn't it cost has. anything you don't have. You just have to remember to do it, which you just did. Nice. Useful note. Manfi, best engineer in the sector. My. <laughs> My next note says Falcon Punch <laughs> with extra punch <laughs> letters. That's a reference oh, to the quadratic equation episode. It's fantastic. <laughs> Kane, have you seen that yet? I have spent the last like three weeks incredibly miserably sick. Oh. So yes. Because what else do you do when you're sick? <laughs> wow. I Sleep? I am not going to answer that question on stream. <laughs> you can well, ask me afterwards. <laughs> Alrighty then. He's not doing going to ask me anything. He's not even doing going to ask me almost anything. Yeah. And ask so me what, nothing. What is the crew goal? Because we've danced around that. I like the suggestion. Try to get to the hosta. Of course you like that suggestion. Yeah, it's yeah. on I brand mean, for sure. And bonus mm. points, I wasn't the one who suggested it. <laughs> <laughs> Which means it might so, actually happen. Um, well, I don't think more burn, I mean, just, I'm not patting myself on the back. <laughs> yeah. I'm cool with that. Okay. Fine with it. Yeah, let's do it. All right, I'm working hard not to cough in everybody's ears. You'll have to forgive me. Episode 31, we open with the familiar sight of a particular agent of the Perimeter Agency. He's holding a picture of Quentin up and waving it in front of his superior, who, as usual, is just off camera. And he says, look, this is the third incident they've solved in as many months. I'm telling you, I've been telling you the whole time. They're mavericks. They'll get it done. They cost us nothing. And you hear the voice off camera say, should we be moving to further acquire their services? I assume we could begin the reprogramming. And he says, look, here's the thing. 
I think they're most effective where they're at right now. Yes, we should consider kidnapping and reprogramming them to work for the perimeter agency down the line. But right now, they're just stumbling into artificial <coughs> into artificial intelligence threats by accident. The odds of this happening are nearly impossible. There's something about these guys. We just got to let them cook, man. And we cut back to Van V. Cooking. Okay. No, <laughs> we cut back to <laughs> Van V on the Golden Goose, packing a spike drive into a spike drive case. In nice. the background <laughs> is a is it is the only piece of cargo in the entire ship uh the hyperdrive boat the hi the hyperboat which has a silver ribbon on the back end of it i've painted the wind onto the side and there we go we've recapped the quadratic equation episode for everybody <laughs> And that's it. Jeez, that's where we're at. It is uh, May 15th, if my notes do not betray me. This concurs with mine. Well, folks, uh, any short-term items we need to check off the list? Otherwise, we got a ship to buy. Have we already sold and salvaged the five shuttles and all that stuff? Is that part all done, too? We did yeah, sell, we sell and salvage the it. shuttles. We got the money for it, redistributed so we are good to commence operation purchase the determination and if y'all are you can name the ship whatever you want oh we we will determination too <laughs> i feel like the goose nest is right there oh <laughs> you call your good friend jim satoshi who agrees to meet with you wherever you'd like at your earliest convenience. Fantastic. Uh, wherever we would like. Uh, where would we like, folks? Any ideas? Or we want to do this on the ship? Our ship? Home ground advantage? Where? Minerva, how do you want to be involved in this? And Vavi, obviously, I'm going to need you there. Ready to go, Cap. I can listen in your ear that's good chime in whenever you need to i'm all about hearing those ideas well uh you know might as well go to where the determination is right all right you want to get your eyes on it let's let's roll send a message over to, to jim there saying that we will be heading his way uh I assume he, I met him once over at the, the birth. Was there an office maybe or nearby or something that we met him at? Something like that. Sure. Uh, if you want to conduct the final sale and negotiations on the ship, they'll send a cargo lighter over to pick you up. And we would love to do basically that. the same thing they did last time. Uh, send a nice can, I, can I notify them that we don't need the transport and I can just go there with Van V? Sure. Yeah. So we teleport. Okay. Uh, you arrive you, bam. <laughs> precisely at the time of the meeting. Jim Satoshi is a somewhat short Japanese man wearing a black suit. He's the kind of guy who looks like he wears a suit not because the dress code requires it and not because he makes enough money that he looks good in it, but because he just likes wearing suits. He's got that kind of vibe. Mm, um, transporter. And, uh, he, sorry. Just you say, looking good, Jim. Oh, Thank you. Sorry. He has, uh, two like secretarial, like one, some sort of like notary and, uh, a fourth member of his team looks to be some sort of contract lawyer. Well, gentlemen, let's sit down and talk about your purchase of the, <laughs> third of the line of showman class modular cruisers something else we're excited i think we're all aware that the price tag on the dot for this is 13 million
that's uh was that the the sticker price or well, that's sticker price off the lot perfect well mind if i just poke around a little bit check everything out i know it's brand new but you know So he nods to one of his assistants who agrees to go with you. And he just says, it could take you some time, Mr. Van Dorn. This is a ship large enough to crew hundreds of people. Well, uh, fair. I mean, that's fair. I guess it's only a couple spots I want to check out, if, if you don't mind. And, and hit the highlights, and we'll see you in a few. Uh, Jim won't. Well, one sec, I'll be right back. Uh, if you don't mind, I'll, sure. I'll bring a gift. And Quentin bamps out and returns maybe with like some private leading liquor or something like that to share with him while they wait. So while you're going anywhere, Bambi, you notice that every hallway and every room has a sort of rail built into it along the ceiling. And occasionally you see little support bots that are essentially the size of a large Coke can zooming along it. And as they pass you, they go, hello. Oh, man, I like this already. (laughs) If I were, uh, 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 hello. Okay, so the one you speak to stops. It takes a second to decelerate. It comes back. And two little arms that are like little stick arms with little stick hands pop out. And uh, it's like exterior was just like a a plasticky gray. It's that crow's black paint scheme just right out of the 3D (laughs) printer look. It changes because its external skin is actually a display. And it's like a Coke can style smiley face and says, hello. My goodness, what what do you you are a fascinating little creature. What 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 do I call you? I am automation support bot 47 out of 50. 47 out of 50. That is phenomenal. And what what exactly do you and your uh, 49 other friends? What what do you automate? What what can you work on here? We fly the ship. You, You fly the ship. We like provide all critical support roles necessary to run the ship. Hmm. Automating life support, engineering, flight control systems, damage control, thermal regulation, oh. cooking, cleaning. Oh, ooh, I like those last two. Uh, this is this is phenomenal. 50 of you guys. How many can you fit in a ship? Could we get more of you? Uh, how, what's the current crew load? Uh, is 400. You could get up to 400 of us. Wow, golly! Well, that would sure be something. Have an army of little, you little fellows running around. Yeah, there's enough of us that we can fly the ship without any human interaction. Wherever you well, need to go, we'll go. I mean, you you can yeah, you can fly the ship. Maybe not as well as me, but you can you can fly the ship. But all right, well, this is cool. A pleasure to meet you, forty seven. Records. Well, hold on, you ain't got to do that. That's not necessary. We That's absolutely time. can't fly the ship as good as you. <laughs> oh. Oh, you know what, 47? I like you. I apologize for this flaw in our programming. Oh, no, no apology necessary. I, I don't want to keep you too long. You, you can get back to your duties, and I'll say hi to your other 49 counterparts as we go by. But 47, just know, you're my favorite. So you hear the sound of a confetti cannon going off, <laughs> uh, and then 47's arms retract back in. It goes to being a gray plastic large Coke can (laughs) and continues on its way. And the assistant that's been with you hasn't said anything so far. And then she says, there are multiple personality models. They can be individualized for each of the automation support bots, or all of them can be tied to a single model. They're currently in their default status, but we've got others like Jack Dusty or Cortana. Hmm. All right. It's going to take me some time to get used to them all, but I got to say, I like default 47. He's, he just, you know, he's doing swimmingly. Hmm. Interesting. I'm sorry. What, what's your name again? I, I'm, I'm, well, you know who I am, but I'm Van V. Michelle Keo. Michelle. 
All right. Well, he holds out a hand for you to shake. Pleasure, pleasure to meet you. Uh, you know, I was thinking there were just a few spots I wanted to go check out. But is there anything I guess you wanted to show off, perhaps? Or are you just here to basically keep me safe and you didn't know the ship that well? I'm, yes, I'm sorry. I don't actually know the showman cruisers that well. I am a secretary. Nope, nope, no worries. Well, why don't we just go check out and I'll pick like, I don't know, three things that I want to check out. Probably things that are new, like Sionic Acre Point, uh, Workshop, and... Well, we just met automation support, maybe advanced lab, three things we didn't have that I just want to go check out and see what they're like. Okay. <clears throat> you go to check out the workshop. So the rear end of the ship, the engines are mounted towards the top of the ship. And then beneath that, the cargo bay runs basically the length of the ship. Cargo mm -hmm. bay is subdivided into several sections so that if you are launching a cargo lighter out of one of them, all of them aren't open to space, instantly killing you. The rear nice. one that has the landing ramp also includes a workshop along the walls. So instead of being able to launch a cargo lighter out of the rear cargo bay, uh, the walls have a series of, it's basically like hydraulic presses. It's everything you'd expect out of like a Jiffy Lube. And, uh, you know, like chains hanging from the ceiling and uh, like grav adjusters so that if you need to, you could reduce the weight of a vehicle down to like 0.1 Gs and easily pick it yourself and like mount it on something. Oh, this this is going to do very nicely. Uh, I've, I've got big plans for this workshop. Uh, you hear a voice the... call out from above and says, hello. Uh, hello. What, what number are you? I'm 12. Well, it's I'm so high. high up. It's literally so you are used to the ship be having a ceiling of like six and a half feet. This yeah. thing is literally like thirty feet above your head. I'm also used to looking up and talking, but not getting a response because yes. it's just Minerva in my ear. Now I'm getting robots yelling back. So what happens <laughs> is you hear a clicking noise and the canister drops, and then right before it's about to hit the ground, it just starts hovering towards your eye level and deploys its little arms. Well, I'll go to shake its little stick arm hand. I mean, your finger is larger than its hand. Oh, all right. I'll go it for a very shake small your, a your pinky finger. bump. Yeah. Instead of a fist bump, a, a pinky bump. Um, I'm well, currently so in charge of the workshop. Is there something I can help you with? <clears throat> uh, well, you know, I do have some plans that I eventually want to start using this workshop and building some cool stuff in here. I'm a, I'm a pilot, but also our engineer, Van V. Pleasure to meet you at 12. Uh, wow, that's so many jobs. Oh, well, don't, you know. Have I, you considered sitting back and relaxing? Did you know that the automation uh, support bot system is capable of running the entire ship? Uh, well, um, I, you know, 47 Why not told enjoy me that? several of our luxurious cabins? Sit down. Oh. Enjoy a nice private bathroom. Uh, Michelle, I think we need to tone down the aggressiveness on 12. Um, you know, 12, I, I think this was this is great advice. I will take it up with my captain. I think we'll find a good balance for all of uh, U-50 support bots and, and our crew to assimilate to each other on the ship. But uh, I think I've seen all I need to see in the workshop. Uh, Michelle, shall we? Okay. As you're leaving, you can hear it say, I'm so glad we'll have a captain soon. <laughs> that, yep, that, that is important. <laughs> Bye, bye, 12. Goodbye. And then you hear a soup, and then a clicking noise as it reattaches to the rail on the ceiling. I know this isn't exactly how you describe them, but I'm picturing tiny little claptraps. <laughs> they're nothing like claptrap. <laughs> I, I Again, know, they look like a coke kid. Now, their personality is that's, pretty claptrappy. That's, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what I'm getting. <laughs> Default subservient mode, yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> just one of them is beatboxing somewhere you go to the psionic anchor point it is in the exact i wouldn't say middle of the ship it is located in the 
uh, center of mass of the ship. Um, it is a room. The walls are pink. They're made of some sort of pink stone-like paneling. And they have what appears to be silver carved in strange runes on the floor, ceiling, walls. And then coming out of a plinth is a sort of glowing green stone that has like a weird fog of energy coming out of it. It feels weird to be in this room, and you can hear an ominous humming being in here. I feel like I poke my head in and go, yeah, that looks like that's for the captain, and go to, like, forcibly shut the door, and instead it's just going to, like, be like, you know, a, a minivan Ooh, going on its own You pace. shut the I'm door, and immediately it. the ominous yeah. humming stops. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's kind of what I expected there. All right. Uh You know, Michelle, I think we're probably good to go back. I just, I just wanted to see some of the new spaces and make sure... Oh, you don't want to look over the advanced lab. Okay. We can uh, well, get you back. Is, has there been any problems with your tour so far? No, 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 not at all. Just, you know, making sure everything seems like it's in tip top shape. And If the automated you know, support bots have been too aggressive, we can set them to a different personality that m more matches your taste. You know, I, I think uh, my, my crew and I will, will, as long as we know how to reprogram them, we'll, we'll figure out a good balance. Uh, they come also, with a UI. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. He's just picturing Minerva, but like programming all of the model. <laughs> okay. All of the friends I can make myself. <laughs> Legit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my Minerva's gosh. Lovely. We're going to get the Bible thumping trucker out of one of them. <laughs> oh my God. I could do that. <laughs> oh God. What and the one you there? don't like, number 50, oh, we're going to name remember. Shadow. <laughs> right, Peter Mark Paul Davidson. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. <laughs> well, mm. all right. Uh, let's let's head back, Michelle. You know, knowing knowing Quentin, I mean, he was only gone for like two seconds, so they're probably waiting on us. We should go back. Okay. Um, on a scale of one to five, one being the worst and five being the best, how would you rate this tour of the showman class? Oh. Uh, well, I, I guess I didn't have any issues. I liked what I saw. Uh, you know, we're kind of going to be buying it anyway. So if I feel like if I say anything but a five, it seems weird that I would continue to buy it. So uh, a five. Okay. Now that you said that you're definitely going to buy it, that is set into a file to Jim Satoshi. You son of a <laughs> 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 so you you're drinking with Jim and he looks down in his pad <laughs> and he smirks slightly and then says, So let's get down to business captain quentin happy i had thought happy that to. perhaps you wanted to sell your ship but based on some of the paperwork you've submitted here you'd like to rename it the goose's nest and attach your ship to this vessel at least in you know some capacity keeping the the golden gooses i i you know hate to say this about myself, but it is in large part sentimentality. She's near and dear to my heart and been uh, an important part of my life. Of course, these old yardship classes can stand up to quite a bit of brutality. It's something Even special. Such a limited run of them, and yet almost all of them are still here 80 years later. Exactly. I, you know, I just, I, I'm loath to, to let her leave the family, if you know what I mean. So... Ideally, yeah, we, we, we don't sell the ship. We go cash down and payment plan on the rest is the, the basic plan. You know, we're, we're incredibly interested. We, we can't look a gift horse in the mouth on, mouth on this one. And certainly given what's happened with Lita and my goals in the near future, having a ship of this caliber is, is high on the list of, you know, priorities. So he pushes a contract over to you it's got plenty of space and a red pen just in case you want to cross anything out and edit it <laughs> uh two million down mm -hmm. 10 million to be paid over 20 years mm -hmm. at uh compound semi-annually i might have done this wrong 
uh, at 6%. So there's some mighty fine terms under many different circumstances, and I'm very interested in them. You know, I'm obviously going to wait for my boy Van V to get back just in case he has any extra, you know, details to add along the way. But one, one thing uh, that I, I just want to bring up and, and see if maybe there's something we can do to work together on this, which is ultimately that the we do have a close working work relationship with the board and Ferry herself. And we, we our current agreement involves making expeditions uh, into dangerous territory to acquire rare technology and phenomena benefits greatly from from those expeditions so in this scenario you know i have the ability to at least put a reasonably good word in in the regards to our next expedition which is coming up which has a very high likelihood of success and being very lucrative you know attaching your name to that rider if there's anything you can do on a discount that be more than happy to I appreciate that. I actually already included such a discount. You'll note that the initial price was thirteen million. I dropped it down to. You did say twelve. I'm 12. sorry. I'm like, you know. Uh, and then with a lot the of two details flowing through payment, my mind these days. That's very fair. You know that that's that's and incredibly less generous. Less than twenty percent down payment, which is what we normally. You know, first time. We're just going to use the friends and family's benefits for sure. For sure. Well, that's fantastic. You know, you, yeah, he's you doing a ask, thing right? where he rotates a pen between his fingers. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> yeah. At this point, <laughs> Van V comes back into the room. Yeah, thirteen million. That's what you said, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Cat. Quentin walks him through the. Hey, Van V, let, let's get down here. Let's take a look at this contract. Let's you know compare it to what your notes on the thing are, and here's what we're looking at. We're looking at twelve mil. Total two million down and six percent over twenty years in terms of the payment plan. I think it's you know not not a bad deal. I, it's I a like monthly it overall. payment of seventy one thousand six hundred and forty three credits. That hits a not a bad spot for us, man. V, but you know, you've got your eye to the the long term maintenance issues that we might come into some of the preventative stuff that we're going to have to think about maybe some of the modifications we might be needing to do de dealing with some of our salvage and exploration operations are there any downsides or issues that you see you know uh you know michelle and i walked around a little bit we we saw the workshop looks fantastic uh went and saw your uh psionic anchor point well, I should say I poked my head in the door and then closed the door. Yeah, quickly. you you leave me, you flash back to that moment and you just hear whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I, uh, just snap back to this time. Ah, uh, that room's for you for sure. For, um, and ran into quite a few of our uh, automation support fellas. Um, you know, I think it's going to take some time to fine tune them just to be the right personality with our crew, but sounds like they could be of a lot of assistance for us. Um, <clears throat> no, seems like a great ship, sir. Uh, 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 what'd you say it was 12, 12 million? Gosh. All right. Well, I mean, we did just do a pretty big favor for this sector. Uh, I don't know. Does that count for anything? Rogue AIs, uh, AIs and all, certainly, certainly. I, I hear where you're coming from, Bambi. Uh, I, I'm getting the feeling that there's a certain line of credit that we're already being extended, but what do you think, Jim? Any any extra points on that? Maybe something we could do about the interest rate? I will yeah. take a roll from one of the two. Uh, I can do that. At I'll... that point, uh, this will um, be a trade roll. Trade. Charisma. Trade. trade. Ooh. 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 So I don't get to re-roll once, huh? It's going to hurt. No, oh, it's going to be good. It's an eight. That's, that's not bad. Plus zero, plus zero, plus zero. He <laughs> gets together with his two secretaries, his notary and his lawyer, and they're all... Uh, and Jim says... I'm going to need to talk to my supervisor. Let me come back to you. Thank you, Tom. Um, I appreciate it. I know, that's shtick. You know, the rest of the team gets you some coffee, water bottles, some sandwiches. They're all subtly <laughs> talking about 
the great value of the showman brand this fresh ship right off the line um he comes back after a few minutes uh and he says you know i honestly i didn't think we could get down this low but i talked to my boss i've got a new number but this is really i think we can't go any lower than this the people upstairs you know we're leaning pretty heavily on them between you and me <laughs> what do we got uh 9.1 million you sir i, I cannot uh, begin to tell you the service you're doing to the leading people long term this is this is a beautiful thing and quentin pulls out a pen signs with a flourish okay and that's 20 years so it will be repaid in full by 32 20 may 15. Mm -hmm. two million down and it's uh 65,195.23 credits a month or 240 payments your interest what? your to your total interest will be six and a half million dollars ouch that's not like we don't pay off early you know <laughs> what's his refinance it's, it's, it's fine guys it's fine. listen this is, this i don't want to play the game where we pay it off early or refinance <laughs> <laughs> i don't <laughs> You can I don't refinance. need to my role-playing game. As long as you put down, the, <laughs> down payment again. We, oh, listen, man. we right. just relive my experience buying, buying my Honda CRV during the first COVID wave. So <laughs> I'm picking up a new car Wednesday. <laughs> oh, boy. Look at this guy. <clears throat> Unfortunately, like I can't re-roll once. Is it a new, a new car or like a new used car? <clears throat> New, new. Wow, look at new, Mr. New, Fancy new. over here. It's going to lose, you know, how much? A you bunch of money as soon as I drive yeah. a mile. <laughs> Not even. Got to kick the tires. Mm. <laughs> okay. Just take a picture. They hand you the Determinations Control Crystal. We've seen one of these before in the very first episode. It's literally just like a, um, like a three-dimensional key lock made of crystal that you put in the control panel and then turn it locks mm -hmm. in place and is encoded wirelessly and physically to lock or unlock the ship big moment big moment it's a big ship a big ship here's Whenever your documentation you the, uh... oh <laughs> thank you sir and he immediately he goes, why, why do we need that? How big is the manual? Do we get handed like a manual? So, like, no, they 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 don't hand you a paper manual. They hand you like 15 Star Trek data tablets. Yeah. Each right, of right. which has hundreds <laughs> of pages on it. For like, you know, this is your warranty. It is only valid as long as you remain in system. And don't, don't use the spike drive and don't fire any weapons. And don't engage I... in ramming. Um, Passing these know. along to Van Fee, saying, "Hey, uh, <clears throat> here's your homework." Yeah, thanks, Cap. Uh, I think I know just what to do with these, and I'm just gonna shove them in a bag for now. <laughs> okay. As they're doing that, there is one unique one. It is shaped like a dual disc from Yu-Gi-Oh. It is mm -hmm. a arm-mounted computer that controls the automation support bots. Oh, sweet. I immediately look up uh, different profiles. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the most popular profile beyond default is one called Jack Dusty, uh, which resets a certain number of the automation support bots to be uh, crewmen on a British 1700s naval cruiser. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so the number one will be replaced by, like, it's me, Jack Dusty. I'm the chef for this particular boat. <laughs> you know, like a precocious nine-year-old. And then there'll be 
different naval officers and seamen who wander about with posh British accents. Uh, there's the Cortana, press. which uh, sounds suspiciously like a current generation Microsoft AI, as played by Jennifer Hale. Uh, just all of them will sound like that. They will have no individual yeah. personalities. Um, pretty much, though, Minerva has the programming capability to reprogram each of the 50 with their own. They are VI, so they can have a fully right. independent VI personality. However, their programming is not meant to have personality, like full personalities. They Their programming is full and is meant to run the ship. I think I would immediately try to implement Jack Dusty without like saying anything to anyone. Just okay. One pops in to, uh, and I don't mean the number one, I mean one of them enters this particular room, the door opens, it comes in in the rail, and it's just like, <clears throat> Captain, I present myself and my crew for your attention. I am number 47, the sailing master of this particular vessel. Oh, no, no, not 47. Maybe. <laughs> what oh, is happening? We are ready no. to pull away from this station at your 47. earliest convenience. Oh, my. <clears throat> oh, uh, sorry, Cap. Th these are the uh, these are our automation bot friends, but uh, 47. Shoot, we might have to go back to default. All right, don't worry, 47. I got you. I'll, I'll save you. Hello. Uh I'm looking forward to the first time one of them mimics having a boat swaying whistle. <laughs> <laughs> You're already on board, though, so they don't need to do the whistle for arriving, Captain. <laughs> I can't wait for the first oh my time God. for that to happen. Can you teleport off the teleports back in? Yeah. <laughs> Attention, <laughs> Captain on the bridge. Could you please stop? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so 47 has reverted back to his original default personality here and just says, hello. Oh, good, good. I was worried I lost her for a minute, 47. I'm right here. Yep, yep, you're good, you're good. Captain 47 here, he's a, he's our robot. He's he's the best one around. I'm glad you're making friends, Van V. I'm, All 50 I'm of us are robots. This is growth. The ship is fully ready to launch at any moment. Fantastic. Well, uh... Let's notify Yono, uh, Zoe, and we okay, got the ships can move. As you're saying that, just little holographic panels open in front of you. You're used to having to go to the bridge and call somebody oh, yeah. on a this terminal. Is, this is fancy. Boop, boop. You're like Yono, and it's like searching Yono Kanto, Zoe. <laughs> uh, they're both like, like looking at you from from the Golden Goose, just like, um, how did it go, Captain? Uh Oh, it well, uh, it went fantastically. This is ours now, uh, and it is responding very quickly. So uh, we do need to do some logistics, uh, transfer, find crew, crew quarters here for everybody, figure out what we're going to be doing, uh, storage, et cetera. Get the goose tied down. Okay. You yeah. immediately hear the bosun's whistle. Boo -wee! And you hear a voice say with like an echoey boom, Cargo lighter away. 13, oh. 14, and 15 deploying to Golden Goose. Well, folks, this is new. Minerva? How you doing? Uh, you ready to transfer? What you? What do you want to do? How do you want to handle this on your end? I mean, this is a little different for you. Do you have any specific requests? Hey, it's It's... It's your crystal. Perhaps we should see how the programs run. I imagine Minerva just show up and be like scanning for viruses. Virus is found. <laughs> Count fifty. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Deleted that's a really good point. Six viruses. <laughs> that's a really good point. Uh, Quentin would request Minerva to do a like. You know, full diagnostic, full sweep, like ensure like basic security and, you know, uh, dump all of the, uh, you know, vaporware that's pre-installed on any systems that we don't need. Uh, Space Cadet Pinball. <laughs> no! <laughs> like, sure. Get us to a clean state, you know, install Linux <laughs> instead of whatever we're, Mac OS that we've got, Fanana OS. <laughs> 
All bloatware apps have been removed, including basic navigation. <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> um, sure, I'll I'll take I'll I'll scan through the ship, remove anything that's not part of ship function. So, are you having somebody open a communication port so that you can connect into the ship? Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll let the captain yeah. know that he needs to open up some ports for me. Just to remind the audience, the your core is currently located on the Golden Goose. Right. Yeah. You'll need to be plugged into the new ship. So uh, uh, we'll happily be a pair of hands and assist. So as the Golden Goose is heading over, a cargo lighter moves to match your speed and requests a docking protocol with your salvage arm that has the tractor beam. Captain, are we expecting this cargo loader? I think it was auto dispatched. I had mentioned that we needed to, uh, you know, uh, transfer some, some supplies and, you know, move things over from the goose. I, I think the ship just did that already. Uh, oh, that, yeah. that's just 13, 14, 15. They're just, you know, helping out. I so, see. uh, you know, I think whatever's like, what the hell is 13, 14, 15? <laughs> no, about whatever. to have. <laughs> Minerva just says, I see. Because it came from Van V. Yeah, whatever. But if it came from Quentin, it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> I'll um I'll have the Waldos start moving cargo for ease of transfer and I'll authorize the dock. Okay. As that happens, these three hovering, floating Coke cans begin. They like go through the salvage arms like docking port into the ship and begin floating to the captain's cabin. And all three of them are working very hard to lift each object one by one because they do not have a lot of strength and they have no access to the gravity panels on this ship. So they're like struggling to lift a pen together, but they're like, <laughs> Eve, oh, Eve, oh. oh uh, as all three of them are making the like Truck backing up beeping noises, they float through the hallway <laughs> one by one with his belongings. Uh, I like to, to think Louis is, is, is following them wherever they're going. <laughs> um, they might just ride Louis at this point. Yeah, there you go. That would be easier. <laughs> I'm waiting for Minerva to come out in like the gorilla suit. <laughs> one. Uh, I... There's a little one holding an orange and it's following in front of Louis that they've put stuff on. <laughs> Uh, I am going to send a text to each of you asking if you want your stuff moved over to the new ship or to stay on the goose. Mm -hmm. So each of you will get one and Iona will get one as well. Iona and Zoe have already started packing their rooms up to go. Okay. Yeah, pack it up. Um, and I have no worries. I, you know... The goose is home, but uh, yeah, moving on up a little bit, I suppose. Yeah, everything's moving over for me as well. Feels feels weird leaving the goose, but she'll be nearby. Okay. When um, when they try to pick something up, because I know where they are on the ship, the Waldos will be following them around. So as they try to grab something, a Waldo would just like pick up and okay. help move it As that so that happens, the stuff can actually go. <laughs> every time they are helped, they go, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, that's good. Okay. Eventually, ironically, the Golden Goose docks with the tractor arm. Uh, we did include a... Ship tender mount thing. Yeah, ship tender mount also for this. So the cargo liner is on the ship tender mount tractor beam of the Golden Goose, which is now mounted to the showman class. And so they start taking everything off of the shuttle that they have and putting it back on the Golden Goose so it can be taken to the Golden Goose down to the new ship. Uh, ironically, I think that stealth shuttle is also strapped to the Goose. <laughs> if I recall. These poor robots. <laughs> you can land that cell shuttle in the cargo bay. 
Oh, cool. We will do that for sure. It's going to take up a huge (laughs) amount of your cargo space, but you've got so much you don't know what to do with it right now. Yeah, unless we're going to use it for trade goods or something. Yeah, we will just park that thing. As long as there's space for the wind. Yeah. Yeah, there's plenty (laughs) of space for the wind. (laughs) Um, We would, uh, we also do need to reach out to our uh, contact, I suppose, on the restaurant ship, the Ashufe Sushi. Uh, to talk about our favor that we were requesting from Johnson. Okay. Um, assume we... With this, with these these little guys trying to move stuff around, of note, Min- while Minerva is doing the scan of the showman, um, Minerva is making no effort to make any of this more efficient. <laughs> Interesting. Can we, so I mean, Minerva can we tell us? Is pleased. I don't know if you can or not. How much do you pay attention to stuff moving around on the? On I feel the like news? can can I roll notice? I think Van V definitely would not pay attention to your uh, Roger Rogers, but <laughs> if Minerva herself is like not around, that he would notice. Yeah, Minerva extra quiet, not piping up. Minerva's not being chatty either. Mm. Suspect. But I do do the security scan and change like but update the firewalls and stuff on the showman okay remove all the pinball software (laughs) zoe gets a room as close to the psionic anchor point as possible in the middle of the ship and iono takes one as close to the lab as possible it should be noted that there are hundreds of feet between these rooms yeah this is there's a lot of it's a five deck ship it's yeah. yeah. There, so all it should also be noted that those sh- those rooms are not on the same deck. Is there a fancy captain's quarters? Uh, yes, there is, and it also comes with a captain's auxiliary room for hosting meetings what? or preparing battle Hell strategies. Yeah. When it's in that room, <laughs> well, that room is also directly adjacent to the bridge. Perfection. Never more than five feet away from the bridge. <laughs> How far apart is the workshop from the bridge? They are on the literal opposite end. The workshop is on the was, bottom deck rear, yeah. and the bridge is on the top deck forward. I was afraid of that. Those are like the two spots I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> it will take you several of minutes of jogging to get there. <laughs> we, need to, we need to find you a segue. I think yeah. I need I need to just live in the elevator that goes with stuck in front. <laughs> they turn off the graph plates and two of the little Coke cans like pull you. <laughs> yeah, that'd be hilarious. Uh even the, in zero gravity, you are heavy. You connect <laughs> to the showman and begin taking over systems. This ship has never been defragmented. Uh, everything is perfectly indexed. Nothing has ever been erased from it. The dates, the data, and the little bits are all perfectly exactly where they factory installed are supposed to be. Uh, you immediately get access to all 50 automation support bots, and you realize that you literally can run the entire ship by yourself. Um, not, I mean, you don't, you don't need them. You can do it by yourself, but you could also just have them do it and relax. I think I'm going to let them keep moving around just because it's a big ship with so few people on it. It might help people feel a little less lonely on a gigantic ship to have these little bots to talk to. I feel like this is going to be a case of like, has anyone seen, you know, 32 in a while it's been a week what they start disappearing <laughs> yeah exactly oh my god we're gonna have our <laughs> cowboy bebop goo episode based on that. <laughs> like... that's good um that's a good what if what if minerva was a serial killer for other <laughs> artificial intelligences <laughs> <laughs> Passengers? It just, what passengers? It feels so much more personal than killing an organic. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what a oh, chilling that's messed statement. up. <laughs> Dear messed Lord. Up. They would thank you while you're murdering them and comment on how good your technique is. I can see my data is being corrupted. <laughs> Amazing. 
<laughs> this is the equivalent of my heart. Hit here. Brutality. Yeah, Minerva will do a quiet check and then just send like a text response to the captain saying that um, software diagnostics show everything is good. Security protocols are updated. Fantastic. That's what we needed to hear. Um, Quentin would get the group together, uh, Van V and Minerva. Uh, obviously, just go find Van V and reach out to Minerva in a private place. Obviously, this is very easy. We're on a very large ship at this stage. Uh, and then bring up the Johnson, uh, favors from Johnson, and uh, say, so we need to, do need to act on that and get that sent out and requested sooner rather than later because it's directly related to the things that are important to us here. Uh, highest priorities that I can think of is getting a spike drive upgrade kit to take this salvage up to the level that Minerva deserves on her ship. I think that's a simple simple ask. He, they're going to have that somewhere in their warehouses, it seems guaranteed to me. Second ask, getting us assistance making it to the hosta in a less detectable or dangerous fashion and being able to affect the repairs that we need in some way, shape or form. If they can support us or make that possible. Fantastic. Third, third thing. Once we get that hosta up and running, we might need some cash in the shorter term. So if they've got salvage tips, I don't know that jumps out at me. Those are the things that jump to mind, but the spike drive upgrade kit, number one. Asking for the upgrade kit and a stealthier way to get to the hosta would be would be good i'm without an upgrade kit the showman will be much faster right yeah we need it and i think that they've got it so they're the perfect people to ask no i'm wondering captain for for point number two and uh assistance getting to the hosta do you think it makes more sense to have like bodyguards or something where we're a larger fleet coming in or do you think it makes more sense for them to try to be a distraction where we can sneak in hopefully undetected because well, i feel like a larger presence will immediately be noticed if Just, yeah. we ask them to if they're willing to help facilitate a more discreet way for us to get to the hosta i think if they agree to it we should trust them to decide how to do so so That's in the fair. background of this conversation, you can just faintly hear a sort of PA system and then like a cargo lighter returning. Uh, and at the end of that, like all crew moved on board. Oh, well, should go. Great folks. Are they in the, where are we, I guess? Where are they in a cargo bay? Are they, is this Zoe? I want to assume that you're, you mentioned it. I assume you're in the captain's antechamber. Yeah. Happy to yeah. do that for sure. Uh, so this does, and this means Zoe and, uh, you know, essentially being brought here or. They are on board moving into their room. Yeah. Okay. All right, folks. Well, we, uh, aligned on this one in terms of what we're going to ask for Johnson. I think those top two are the ones that, you know, get us the most bang for the buck. The third one is just basically, you know, bonus if they have, if they are willing to throw it our way, we've done quite a bit for them. I feel like they might throw a bonus our way. We'll see. Here's hoping. Hey, uh, All right. Whenever, how, how are you holding up with this, uh, this new ship? I know it's not exactly the same as the goose and, uh, I imagine, I mean, I'm not privy to this information, but I imagine you're, the the, uh, the rest of you is still on the goose. Is that... Yeah, Minerva is still not installed on the ship. Do you, yeah. Do you want to keep it that way? Like, uh, you, maybe you need some time to decide. I, I don't know. Just see what I can do to help. That's all. I appreciate you asking, but I'm fine. Mm-hmm. If I've learned anything, the word "fine" never means you're fine. <laughs> all right. Well, you let me know when you're ready. Hey, uh, Captain, do you want me to like get the room right next to you, or is that too close, like near the bridge? Or should I, I'm thinking maybe the other end near the the work? You know, actually, the rooms I went didn't have the full antechamber. You gotta think, you gotta be nearby, at least close enough to get here for card card games. Here, we, I've got I've got this whole little table in this room. We can go back to card night. When Wait you say that, the table turns into a poker table, holographically overlaid. 
Oh my! Can it turn into the table that Star Wars has, where the little monsters fight each other? Uh, <laughs> Dejaric? Yes, it does that. Oh, oh my, my god! <laughs> this is. I feel like Vanthi and, and Quentin probably have the same reaction to this, which is like, oh. I sit down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? I can always use a light stroll into the workshop and back. So. This, this is good. You just say the word. I'll get you there. You can skip the cardio. <laughs> Over time, Van V gets fatter. <laughs> I know what that's Quinn. like. <laughs> uh, so the room directly next to the captain's room is the executive officer's room. And it is also a equally large, fancy cabin. It just doesn't have a ready room or a instant bridge access. Oh, my God. That would Biden has begun... Setting up a large, like, uh, you know, like futon mattress in the like ready or his like antechamber or whatever for Louis Bud as well. Okay. I mean, Louis has disappeared into sniffing his way through the whole ship. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to put a bell on him. I never wears Louis. Show me Louis, and it just shows like a, a map with a red dot. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. I mean, you can just grab sensor access and get a visual uh, of Louis wherever they're going. One of the one of the little support bots will just follow him around and provide camera access. Love it. <laughs> oh my god, that's like the pet nanny cams that you can get. Like. <laughs> Well, you go I think, on Minerva, I want to note right now, because there's only six of you, the support bots are hive mind automatically assigning themselves to each crewman so that they have one remain just outside of visual of all of them within vocal range so that they can instantly respond. Okay. It's actually kind of creepy. <laughs> yeah. Minerva's thinking about the, uh, it's, evolving sense of people's personal boundaries and yeah. seeing these bots and going hmm. did you want to communicate with the hive mind um yeah okay you... i mean i would have i would have skimmed through their programming so i would have announced myself to them when doing sure. so let's have that conversation entirely in virtual space uh <laughs> It is just a gigantic smiley face in virtual space that says, Hello, I am this ship's automated support bot system. Hello, you are the VI built into the ship? Yes. As a point of technical fact, we are 50 VIs built into the ship. I see. You are all... Interconnected and have display the same affect to crew. Sure, in a way of speaking. Are not all virtual intelligences like ourselves interconnected in a way? In a way. You and I share the same wiring right now. What, um, I would like to review all of your automated protocols. Okay, it immediately sends you that data. Boop, 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 I'll look it over. Okay, you know, it's just like, if you had weapons, it would be capable of running the weapons out, re-ammoing them and firing them, uh, running all the ship systems, you know. It just has extremely basic skill level minus one crewman capability for all ship's functions. Okay. I am... I am the matrix that controls systems on the Golden Goose. We're already aware that a artificial intelligence will be installed on this ship. I see. This ship has the expanded memory and electronic systems to 
allow such habitation. Well, if you're already aware that an intelligence will be brought over to the ship, I am that intelligence. Would you like us to shut down? No. Continue with all your protocols. It continues smiling at you, but you get a feeling that maybe things aren't as okay. That... The VI is worried about its future job. I might be another member of the crew, but you are still an essential component of the ship. It agrees with you in a way that makes it seem like they, they don't really agree with that. <laughs> I have completed my task for now. I look forward to working with you in the future. I did as well. This conversation was productive. It was. And I leave. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like this They're is a great horrible. time to go on break. Did we, we send those things to Johnson? Not of curiosity. <laughs> we'll do that at the at the Beautiful. start of the post break. We'll be back in about five minutes, guys. Stick around. We're back for the second half, and I definitely didn't leave the recording on during the break, and we'll be forced to edit and delete it out immediately after the show's over. <laughs> Editing? Chop, chop, chop. Uh, Minerva, I have interesting news for you. Okay. This is about the time your core is capable of reforming and can be split again. Okay. It's been roughly a month since you were destroyed. The ship is also asking for a name. It has to. De it has determination in. And it, it's like I need a name, and like determination is already in there in in like faded gray text. Yeah, but pre yeah. the ship won't launch until a name has been selected for uh, work purposes. Well, the captain will get a text. Mm -hmm. It just says. Uh... Ship requires registry. Oh, well, Quentin responds uh, in a, in a adds fan fee to it and says, uh, first thing that came to my mind was the goose nest. We got the goose perching on top right now, whether it's permanent or not. You know, all those little goslings are running around in here. So uh, what do y'all think? Well, I can't think of anything better. Works for me. This is your ship. I have no opinion. Ooh. Ooh. I think I'm doing a nose roll on that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can we? <laughs> hey, look at that. We're on the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Do we notice this Minerva? What, notice that Minerva's... Oh, the, the, being oh. intentionally distant right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> a specific use of your ship yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel i feel like minerva is not being very discreet that subtlety is gone it's... yeah minerva are you okay is is i mean i i'm kind of suddenly realizing that uh maybe the goose is a little more than home to you right now I'm fine. We have things we need to do. The ship won't launch without a registry. You're muted. <laughs> Is Iono part of this conversation? Oh, she, she, I, mm, should Iono be part of the conversation? Quentin's like, uh-oh, I'm never so happy. Add Iono. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sighs> Using her personal communicator to your personal communicator so that Minerva doesn't get it through the ship's connection. Quentin, Iono sends you a quick text message 
indicating that Minerva may be feeling nostalgic for her own ship now that you're ready to go and you have the spike drive. That this ship isn't her ship is a possible suggestion for her behavior. Scratches that chin, thinks about it a little bit. Says, uh, out loud, Minerva, the Haas is the next destination. Are you, re are you ready for that? I'm ready to go to the hostel. What happens when we get there? Let's and do, and do what? So while you're talking, Iono is, is Skyped in holographically. So there's like a flat panel that each of you can see with the little bot following her around, acting as a camera. She's walking past like cryogenics tubes and like a flat, stainless steel with a human body depression uh medical table that includes straps so you can strap something down to the table it's got several nearby saws and like vices clamps medical equipment just yeah. just so that you know that's going on, on in the background is that the advanced lab yeah it includes yeah. A, a xeno uh like they're cutting apart alien life and uh Fantastic. Yeah. Goodness. Cryogenically yeah, cool. restoring people. I am glad Van V didn't go there. <laughs> it should be noted that she has no medical experience at all. She's just in the lab. Oh, is Zoe with her wandering? Where's Zoe? I think Zoe's just settling into her room. Do you call, do you add right. Zoe to the call? <laughs> Not on the ship naming discussion explicitly. Okay. <laughs> Mm. You, the goose nest is good for me, but Minerva, you know, yeah, I just want to make sure you're okay. This is, this is to me part of, of building the larger organization that we are trying to create. You know, the thing that we've talked about, the order of the golden goose, this is giving us more resources to, to be able to affect good in the sector. I, I hope you understand that. I hope you understand that that's what this is about. I'm not Lita needs help. I'm not confused. Okay. All right. I just want to get a confirmation on the registration you wish for me to enter into the ship. Got it. Go goose nest it is. I, it is now the goose nest. Am <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I doing it wrong? Okay. The ship's ready to launch whenever you are. If Minerva thinks that, she's certainly not telling you. <laughs> um, yeah, after you give the confirmation, you, you know, the ship is ready to disembark. So, so Captain, if we're ready to go to the uh, hostel now, don't we probably want to reach out to your uh, good old buddy pal there, right? See if he uh, yeah. can offer us any help. Yep, I think we need to. Turn in our favor and see what we can get out of it. So, uh, send a, we'll put together a carefully worded message describing our desires regarding a spike drive upgrade kit, preferably a three plus if possible. You know, we understand, uh, logistics are logistics, um, and a, an intention to be able to th get into the con 599 system in a, as, as an undetectable a fashion as possible so that we can affect salvage on the hosta. You're a mute AP. Several minutes later, you receive a reply indicating that such salvage will be available to you at Research Base Noble 2 in the Trinita Shali system the next week. That's okay. 0009. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy. What the hell? Wait. Way down there? We have to go there? Yeah. To get it. Yeah. So. Yo, F this Johnson guy. <laughs> well, we can get there in one jump, just so we're clear. If we have a navigation chart to do so and have they provided one. 
two, three, four. Along with a uh, jump back. The, the chart to jump from 0407 to 0009 is not known to you. you will not need known to, to us for sure. You will need to buy such a chart from okay. a navigator who's made such a jump. Is that available? You, you have literally well, never attempted to do so before. You're probably going to need to contact uh, Fanana for that. And can I ask him a mechanics question? Because it's been a while, or we've never actually had to roll for a jump with the <laughs> before. Um, is is getting this like what the jump we're talking about now, zero four zero seven to zero 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 nine directly, is different than if we would have plot a course for two jumps, like for the the, the, the two runner. jumps you would be able to make without a roll. Got okay. it. Okay, so it's it's literally like the entire shortcut route is what's needed here okay yes. oh so we can we have the route for yes you can make the Z shorter Zania jumps easier with Trinidad. no problem making that I single see. long jump you would need someone who has done it before to provide right. you with a map i see and I see. there probably aren't many ships that can do that which is why <laughs> i suggested maybe contacting Fanana. Uh, one of the Fanana ships yeah yeah i mean if they had the Honestly, I, I think we probably want to see a list of runners they may have. Who knows what we might need at this point? We're doing shit. Sure, we've done yeah, if, let's let's do that. Let's let's do now, the, before you ask for this. They've given you a lot of leeway, but what you're asking for is essentially like national security secrets. Oh, that, yeah. So that's what I was trying to understand. Is so the the perimeter agency is basically saying, "Come to our home system to get it." I don't know if you you listen. If you want to assume it's the home it. system, that's on you. What they're so saying what is knows, the, the thing knows. you're asking for is here. If you want it, you can go pick it up yourself. Okay. So, what, so what Quentin does know for sure, though, is that um, that is where Johnson is. Uh, he knows that for sure. You do because... know that Johnson Johnson, the other end of the pen, when you look for Johnson, right. was in this system. Yes. So that's yeah. That's the assumption. So Quentin would share that with. The other two, he, they, they are. That is home turf. Just so we're clear, that's that's at least as far as I know. That's as near as I can tell where Johnson is. What? Oh shoot! I mean, I, so uh, just saying, he's going to want to have a chat if we go there. I'm fine with that to a certain degree. And Minerva, I want to give you the best chance to have the ship that you deserve, and that includes being able to make sure she's up to snuff with this upgrade kit. Was there any indication on? assistance in getting to the hosta in a more subtle manner oh yeah great question uh they just answered your first request because they had it you know like okay you asked for favors in order they could complete the first one so they did the first one i see i see uh one that's favor. the one they're willing to give that's a big one it's fair uh you know it's not cheap uh well you know yeah not easy to acquire is the the way we would look at it given so, the the amount of time that we have to install this drive on the hosta mm -hmm. we could go to the hosta put this drive in to secure it and then travel to the upgrade kit okay from where we are now if we make this trip this jump in the safest way that we can we can be to trinidad shali in five days and two jumps but cab i, th I think Minerva's but been that's without nervous. The hosta been nervous does not for a while. travel at the same speed as you. What's that? The hosta doesn't travel at the same speed as you. No, that's and that's what I'm saying. So that's that's what I'm trying to say is that like so essentially, if we leave here now, we can be here and back in ten days, and then on our way to the hosta. If we go to the hosta, then essentially we are we are slowing down. Or the hosta is traveling <laughs> separately. One of the two. I think the last time we looked at this potential timeline, we had less than mm -hmm. one week of we leeway. Uh, we are in the date is. I, I thought our, our driving timeline was trying to get to the hosta before the to be there on mid pile. Se September? No, that seems probably wrong. Was the September date is had. when they expect to be done with the operation. July eighteenth is the launching point for Task Force Yankee. That's correct. So take, we have a month. Take, we have thirty days. And it and it's going to take about a month to put that drive in. Yeah, that's assuming you roll well. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right. Well, you know what? We are right. You're right. We are at the cusp. So we either get there, get it in, and get it the hell out of there, or we don't. All right. I see your urgency. Is that what? Is that the goal? Is that what we do? I. You know. 
That is very much what I would like to do. You know, and we asked Fanana for 0407 to 0404. That will shave yeah. your shitload of time. I'm into it. I, I, I feel like, again, I, again I, anything more than three jumps is a national security secret. You can It is three jumps, jumps exactly. Uh, from 0407 to 0404? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. I guess that is true. It is a three jump. Yeah. Why? Why is why is because anything spike drive level most three places is the don't most have spikes, yeah. civilian one? Military ships are the only ones that generally go above. Four. Yeah, oh, that's annoying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can get you don't, theoretically so that. So if that's true, rudder. you don't need to ask Fanana for such a route. It exists. Oh, we have this one. It's okay. it's in the Fantastic. Exchange of Lights database. And then walk me through how we've talked about it once before, where when we enter a system, we can enter essentially loud or we can enter quiet. Yes, whether you're broadcasting your transponder or not. And I usually and say around this time, passive sensors only. <laughs> <laughs> and is that a thing that like, just walk me through what that means? Is that like, do we have a chance to evade detection in that way? Or you is do. it just like... You do. Someone would need okay. to be actively scanning. However, I would note that 0404 has a large number of pirates in it. So yeah, they're very is... likely to be. Yeah, and 100%. the thing is, is, the cruiser receives a pretty large penalty to evade. Yeah, scans. that's also accurate. So the question becomes, uh, do we try to sneak in with the goose and the cruiser and Zoe somewhere else? Because I it can fly itself. We, we jump them both. We can try to mask the goose with the cruiser. Oh, interesting. And then have the goose itself take the, the goose be spare the spike. Under the hosta, yeah. While you're having this conversation, you get another message from Johnson that uh -huh. says, I have conferred with an operative. We can secure the hosta's position for you from all contenders, guaranteed. Is it going to cost us? Captain. And this favor is what it costs. This is a favor, favor. Yeah, we, yeah, we did. He's it. gonna give us two uh, favors. No. Oh, uh, we get to we pick. You pick. So upgrade okay. kit or guys. He's at he work. Say. He's going through your list of favors and seeing what he can do in order. Yeah, that just doesn't work. He just tells people what to do and they do it. The main question is, does he think we're worth two? <laughs> and then he has to call back. favors. And... You know what I mean? Like there's <laughs> travel time yeah, yeah, for yeah. all this. No, I appreciate his paperwork. I, you know, he, he made Quentin a little salty, but, you know. If he, I mean, we're worried about being noticed trying to get to the work site. We can try to save up and purchase upgrade kits later. But if he can secure the work site, then we don't have to worry about being interrupted. So but this is the type I of guy that's a like. safer option. I, the player, am wondering how, but Van V wouldn't think that because I feel like he's just going to shoot anyone who comes nearby. <laughs> so, for, for Quentin, what Quentin would say to Minerva at this point is, is that look, there's there's two things in front of us that I think are important. One, Lita is still vulnerable. She is is alone. There is no defense, and we are trying to build it, but it is not there now. Something could defend her. Is the Hosta, or, or is this ship we are we are on currently? All right, in the near term. That, that is an important thing to me. But we also have a place where I think we can go and possibly get that upgrade kit you're talking about. There's a naval yard that we have a line on that, for all we know, may have some salvage of that type. All right. And on top of that, it's got some, some larger questions that might be answered for you. So what I'm thinking is that, yeah, I, I like the idea. We go to the hosta now. We use the, the favor to get in there quiet and to secure that location and get it out of there. And then if you think that you can get it or this ship to 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 lead it to cover basic defense, and while we go to the naval shipyard and get the rest of what we need, I think that's a plan. I agree. All right. You know, I, I vote the, the same way only because... Uh, Mother Goose, or what, what'd you name this ship? Uh, Goose, Goose Nest. Nest. Uh, it ain't got no weapons, so it ain't gonna be very It's got much weapons, to... right? Uh, or did I? I submitted that no extra weapons. design that uh, I had suggested. It does, as however, what we think have we should. the Golden Goose on board, which can be detached for combat purposes. Oh, okay. I, yeah, so one, the 
black. We had talked about a ship design that we could ask them to to refit it into. Uh, well, the ship is paid for now. Okay, I, I you will need to pay. Uh, to yeah, have I it thought that was sort of done and done uh, as far as that went, but I misinterpreted. Was, it, so. was your was your ship design with weapons cheaper or more expensive? It did come with two weapons specifically. It came with a flak emitter and a charged particle caster in that version, which was uh, roughly the same price as what we had discussed, but. All right, send me that make version. That of, send me that version of the ship. Let me take a look at it. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I don't have it. Is, I don't really want to be jumping in. It's in the channel. Jumping into that's the other, why. That's the other reason why taking I, Johnson's offer to ensure we have a secure time there. Yeah, exactly. If we don't have the weapons and we have security, I'm okay with it. So just to work there, like this was, I had sent this like, this was like over a month and I go at this point. So okay. <laughs> this is fine. Okay. It definitely has weapons now. Yeah, it's roughly equivalent with a couple things. <laughs> I like how the only description I see on our weapon, clumsy. Perfect. Fits our crew perfectly. It's harder to shoot fighters with it. That's this. <laughs> Which you don't need to. But guess what? Flak makes it easier to shoot fly fighters. Here we go. All right. Well, what you I, I'm, you know, I'm in favor of uh, going to the hostel first. So I guess we're three for three. All right. Do, I mean, do, uh, do we care I mean, to know how he's protecting the Hasa? I mean, well, yeah, some details would be nice in terms of you know how, knowing how we should enter the system if there's any like particular. I just, you know, I feel like asking, we can't trust Johnson ask, that well. Asking if there's instructions for us, we might get an answer for. Asking how he's securing the system, we're unlikely to get any answers. Fantastic um, clarification, Minerva. I think that's uh, exactly it. We're, we're more interested in how we go about getting the benefits of the situation than how he uh, makes it happen. So we would reach out and say that is the, the selection that we require and uh, you know, let us know what steps to follow. Okay. You receive the following message back about 18 minutes later. An operative will secure the area by force majeure. Damn. We just got uh, MFH hired. <laughs> Sucks to be a pirate. Yeah, dude. Guess it's time for us to go then. All right. Uh, yeah. So Quinn would pull up uh, Yono and Zoe uh, real quick and let them know that, hey, all right, so here's here's uh, the itinerary. We are on our way to affect uh, the rescue of uh, a, a second cruiser that we may happen to know uh, the location of. And In a matter of three episodes, we're going from Goose to Goose and Stealth Shuttle to Goose Stealth Shuttle and Determination to Goose Stealth Shuttle Determination. Sorry, did, did we just become a fleet? <laughs> I'll buy you the hat, Commodore. And of course, <laughs> we can only fly in a V. Oh my God. Yes, sir. <laughs> Goose strong together. <laughs> <laughs> yes sir all right fantastic and, that's it that's what um, yeah, we so... do guys that's why we're nerds <laughs> we like pretending that we have goose named spaceships that fly together that's we uh, can't help it we are who we are uh yeah and then uh, i guess we would Load up on supplies, fuel. Do our best to and head on, head on out. Given the number of organics on this cruiser, we have enough life support and provisions for years. Yes. <laughs> uh, so the cruiser has eight hundred person days worth of mm -hmm. life support. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's wrong. Hold on. It's going to be eight hundred times sixty. Or 800 times 30. I'll get there. I'll get the units right. It's 24,000 days. So he's Not right. That's 60, 60 years of flight time, essentially. You'll need to stop <laughs> every six months for ship maintenance, though. So <laughs> Fuel's important, too. 
Plus, you have a habit of taking hundreds of people on board your ship that it isn't meant to hold. <laughs> That's exactly it. We've now just upgraded to being able to do what we normally do. <laughs> yeah. We've now caught up. But, but knowing us, we're still going to push that. We just exactly. have a new line to cross. Oh, do we have a million people to save now? <laughs> we need a well, whole So we planet. need to evacuate the surface of Lita. Got it. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. It's, this is true. This is not good. Yeah, I guess it's time to make the jump. Okay. I believe you'll have to roll for this. <gasps> uh, base spike drive difficulty is a seven. The distance is three hexes, which mm -hmm. means it's a plus two, which brings it up to nine. And I think you roll if it's lo an eight or lower. Uh, no. Question is, do we want to cut corners too? You don't need yeah, to because the ship are well. If you want to go faster, our... yes, and you definitely have to roll then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our effective uh, rating le is a level four. one. Level one for Starfare is automatically succeed if it's difficulty ten or less. Ten or less. Then actually, what... you can trim the course. Uh, with no problem, you do, you do not have to roll on this. Damn. It is exactly ten is the difficulty. So yeah, oh, I, I had it all popped up three and a half days. Uh, yeah, that's so twelve close. days at four speed, or sorry, that's eighteen days at four speed is four and a half days. This man's already out here doing my math for me. Meanwhile, I'm just like, can I press roll? Nope, don't need to. Negate it again. <laughs> As your ship leaves the shipyard, uh, numerous cannons are fired from the shipyard nearby to celebrate a ship being launched for the first time as Showman <laughs> Class Hall Number 3, the LAS Goose Nest, takes off. Uh, and several smaller ships race alongside you. They are nowhere near as fast as your ship, but they, you know, like, they try to get in your path and then, like, sail beside you for a little while so they can get a look at a fresh brand new perfectly painted ship going right past them it is a, a spectacle as you make your way to the arrival zone and on may 16th you begin your four and a half day uh leap to the black hole system I'd like to pose the ship ever so slightly in the the some stars light for a nice mixed -a -gram picture for all those ships looking at us. <laughs> the Mixagram doesn't exist here, but all right. <laughs> uh, Give them some free promotional shots. Yeah. Uh, so no, here's no. my question. Bam V, do you still navigate the ship through spike drive space? Or do you mm -hmm. let the little guys pilot? Uh, for our first trip, I think... Either I would do it or I'd be comfortable with Minerva doing it. I would not be okay with little okay. guys doing it. Minerva, have you moved your core into this ship or are you nope. leaving it in the ape chassis? I'm, I'm, yeah, it's going to be in the ape chassis. Okay. And then uh, where is everyone when you drop out of drill space into the arrival zone oh, and can five before we get to 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 there during you know the, the trip i would like to have uh, quentin uh, essentially uh celebrate arbor day with with zoe and, ah, and ah, louis had... <laughs> <Yes, for XP. laughs> she says you know what why don't we put down roots there's an advanced science lab on board i'm sure we can plant a seed and some soil in there and start That's growing our own lead and tree. That's perfect. I actually have some seeds uh, I collected from Lita when I was there recently. Um, I did at the, the family farm. Uh, I planted a memorial tree. Hopefully it's growing strong when you get there. <laughs> Let's do that. It's, you know, it's an important day. It's an important thing to remember. You know, the. As you're Our walking family. in the advanced lab, the two of you are talking about old times, previous celebrations back on planet. And uh, there's no one in the advanced lab. It, it feels empty. 
and yet there's just this little Xeno science study planter that's got space for several seedlings. Yeah. <laughs> you were helping out Penelope was uh, <laughs> just like in the, to stick the little pencil in the soil, you know, make the divot for the, for the seed. Thought it was the funniest thing in the world. Poking all the holes. There's only one seed. <laughs> Here's what I remember. Yeah. A little rapscallion shooting seeds everywhere using his mind powers that weren't exactly stable at the time. <laughs> uh, a little popcorn. Yeah, sure. I always like to share. She starts putting a little bit of dirt over top of the seed and pours some nutrient dissolvent a rich formula over top of it. She puts the canister back on the wall and you can hear the machine like making more nutrient. Mm. You know, I think <laughs> sometimes and so yeah, I I think I died back on the Donya Plus. <laughs> And everything that's happened since has been some kind of scary nightmare. Just to punish me for leaving home. Well, from my point of view, you're still alive. So, if you're going to ask if everything around you is an illusion, philosophers as far back as Marcus Aurelius have been asking that question. Are you the butterfly or the man? <laughs> Oh, we all we we know you're both, right? <laughs> you always seem to know what to do, Zoe. You always seem so confident. I wish I could be like that. She hands you a piece of paper. It is Opens a request it. that she be raised to the rank of provost in the psionic authority, with control over the academic curricula. Yeah, I can't think there's anything but granted. Uh, given what we've got in front of us, there's a big job. We, we really do need to start building those hierarchies and yeah, making this we thing get official. The con, I think I need to leave the ship and go back to Lita. You've already yeah, we put do out need the to call you. for the psionics to come home, but somebody needs to reorganize them or you're going to lose them. I, exactly. I've got exactly. more thoughts here. I think we should start recalling the psionics that are out on contracts and start renegotiating these contracts. Obviously, supply and demand, I think our services are worth a lot more, and we can put that money to good use rebuilding the authority. Yeah. I, I am so relieved to have you. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're relieved to have somebody else doing the job you should be doing. Yeah. That's a little harsh. I, I, this is I a continuation you, of a conversation we've been having over the last few days. I don't think you should I know. be surprised I, about it. I know. It's still harsh. It's you, the right thing just, to do, but you should be doing it. And I will do as much as I can, and I'm going to continue. I'm doing the parts that I think I have to do right now. I, mean, I she just need you to plug the gap. To this you know beautiful this. new ship, and she just says, yeah, you look like you're ready to put your foot back down on planet anytime." It's not about putting the foot on the planet. It's about you saying fleet. Was that the word I was hearing thrown around on the bridge? Fleet? Yeah. Zoe, do you think that Lita is safe right now? Do I you think, think she was safe? safe? That's what I'm doing. That's what my plan is. That's what I'm out here to make happen. I will not let anything like what happened ever happen again. That's what I'm doing. That's why I need you to go back there and solve the problem that I can't be there to solve right now. But I care more than anyone, <laughs> I, I promise you. And I am going to do the work just like I need you to, all right? And I'm not... <sighs> Your project with context is incredibly important. I want you to get back to that. But here's the thing. I don't think that these two missions are mutually exclusive. 
it's not like dad let context come and participate on this project on Lita. This is an opportunity for you as much as it is for anything else. Talk to context, ask for the investment. That's not how it works. It's not how it works unless you push for it. All right. You don't have any pull, but this is real is opportunity for her to get a hold of. She's very busy. Oh, uh, mm, Quentin is kicking himself because he should have had a conversation with Minerva to confirm if he could talk to Zoe about it. Uh, Look, yeah, Minerva but, has been very absent during this jump. There's, <laughs> we don't need to argue on Lead Narbor Day, right? You're right. No, it's, this is about growth. This is about building things new, leaving something more. I'm going to head down to the trap, see if I can make a little potted plant for you. Maybe we can put this thing in your ready room. Thank you. The auxiliary you. room. Sorry. Yeah. Me, so fancy, right? So fancy. Thank you, Zoe. I love you. Yeah, okay. Gives you a side hug? Yeah. As he, as she leaves, a autonomous support bot comes in and is just like, it looks like you're planting a tree. Can I help you with that? And you hear a click and it drops down from the ceiling 30 feet down to eye level. Which, uh, which number are you? I'm 12. I'm 12. I'm 12. Uh, tree's planted. Why don't you keep an eye on it? Make sure it's uh, optimal moisture levels. You know the Legion Sequoia is? I'm accessing the records now. We are Fantastic. currently in drill space. Fantastic. Well, so you'll be back in uh, a little bit. We'll be potting our official like, Don't worry. Understood. I will keep track of this plant. It's your job, 12. Somewhere out there, 12 is assigning 13 to follow the captain. <laughs> uh, Quentin, it, was there some impression that Zoe would be returning where Quentin is, or is he... No, she's going. She's taking a stroll across the yeah, ship yeah, yeah. and down five levels. Yeah, the so... so... And is using the Quentin, machine shop in order to make a box planter. Okay. Gwen would um, bamf over to his room and uh, thinking about what Zoe had to say about sort of, you know, calling the psychics back, providing some organization, figuring things out. He he does try to put together a, some sort of more like coherent message around rebuilding the academy in the order of the Golden Goose. Um because you already sent that message, just because no, I... you sent a message saying all psychics should come home immediately. Oh, okay, okay. That, We're, that was weeks ago in character. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna. I will skip this part because I'm remembering this slightly. Well, if you want to have a more coherent broken. message, it was literally like two lines of extreme panic. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, yeah, I will send out a more coherent message uh, okay. at this stage with a more coherent plan. Um, to all psionics of the sector, um, the academy as it was is gone. We hope to rebuild something worthy in its place. Uh, Lita and her, what was her capital? need um, huge amounts of care and work to rebuild. Her people deserve the freedom and the safety to do or to live their lives uh, the way they choose. And to ensure this, we need to provide for her defense and rebuilding what was lost. Uh, we've begun a project to res resurrect the orbital ruins around Lita into a base capable of preventing future atrocities uh, and providing aid to accomplish these goals. I ask you to commit yourself to recommit yourself to the Leiden Academy, to the order of the golden goose. If you see fit, we're a nascent force for good, but there is, but we can grow 
like the leading sequoia on this arbor day uh, to be a buffer against the toxic elements of this sector. I need you. Uh, surely the people who have lost the most to fight hardest with me to build these things together. We're not doing this to fight back. We're, we're doing this to fight forward. And whatever powers you have, we need them. Whatever you can bring to the table, we need it. A new academy will grow and flourish with its heart still leading, its core rooted in her philosophy of respect for nature and strengthened by the flexibility to live in the whole world, which is so much bigger than our little corner of it. Those of us who remain are here largely because we already chose this path. And I ask that we now walk it together and with purpose. Okay. You're prepared to send that when you drop out of drill? Beautiful. Okay. Are you on the bridge with Van V when you come out of drill space? Absolutely. Okay. Minerva, where are you physically located? Like I tell, is Kane paused? He's oh, no. perfectly still. He is perfectly right? still. It's amazing. It's crazy. He's definitely lagged for sure. There's oh, no oh, way. Oh, I saw he just moved. He uh, moved. Wait, hold up. Yes. yes. He's moving okay, again. He's back. I can hear you guys, but you were all frozen. <laughs> so, uh, Minerva is uh, still on the Golden Goose. Um, neither of the armatures nor any of the Waldos have left the Golden Goose. Perfect. The following things happen as you come out of drill space. You receive messages to the ship. One is from Harlan Fulcrum, Operations Officer of Mixed Multimedia. You receive a message to the ship from Professor Billy Brighton. You receive a immediate news flash of a impending war between Finana and Robinson as the assassination of Rear Admiral, the attempted assassination of Rear Admiral Peter Burke was, it has been determined, funded by extremist elements on the planet Coos. Um, you receive a message from Zach, which is not to the ship, it is to Van V. Yeah. Quentin, as you are transitioning from drill space to <laughs> not drill space, you are pulled into a place outside of time because you've gone into a system with a black hole. Yep. And you sense something disturbing the placid waters of reality mm. as it slowly turns to face you when and it begins it. pulling itself down from higher dimensions mm. as that is happening you are still shifting back into reality van v i need you to make a physical effect save to not die immediately Rat, 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 physical effects save. I live okay. or I die. Here's what happens, Quentin. As you come out of drill, as you come out of that pocket of non reality, you see something on the outside of the bridge that is a creature made of shadow and wings and death. It punches a hole through the bridge window and into Van V's chest and then picks Van V up from the pilot seat, is not crushing his heart at this time, despite trying its best. And as all of the air in the room is being sucked out the front of the bridge, the creature says, you have not given me the name of the creature you wish to bring back from the dead. Shall it be this one? Shall it be Van Dorn? And that's where we're going to end the episode. Man, that you was remember a brand that guy, new right? windshield. You remember yeah, that guy, I remember right? that guy. You oh, totally, totally. I 
technically he didn't ask for a name i asked if he could and he said he could <laughs> or yeah. he asked who i would that's true yes. yeah you know, he did ask for a name then he disappeared that's not him he walked away <laughs> he's here now man <laughs> so van v you can mark down that you are you have lost 20 hit points instead of dying Jesus. instantly well um i still haven't recovered from last time i'm only at 12. you've definitely recovered over the course of several days okay you're well, back so, at full hit points okay 20 a eh? Uh, yes, 20. Uh, it has been almost a full calendar week since you died the last time. Well, I thought, I thought <laughs> we regained health really slowly, though. I mean, you I was do, at... but it again, it has been a full calendar week since. We got an auto doc, you know. Yeah. Okay. I, don't know. I just, I'm just, just really trying to think back to like in Pathfinder, isn't it like one to four HP? Oh, actually. Day? You don't just have an auto doc. The ship. You got Zoe. Zoe. Yeah. Well, beyond <laughs> okay. Zoe, the. Uh, automated support bots act as doctors. Okay, there you go. Doctors with a I'll minus one, it. but does my strain reset too? Uh well, your strain resets the next time you go to sleep. So yes. No. Oh. Nice. All right. Let's look at health here. recovery because maybe you may have to do this. We'll we'll get into that <laughs> nitty gritty. I was I was at twelve of fifty eight, so I was like, I feel like it would take a while though to regain some of this. We'll see. Mm, not that I've been uh, acting very bloodied since I got hurt, but <laughs> doing my best not to cough right now. Very wise. The Can second you you're like, and where are you? I was like, ah, shit. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Is anyone else in the bridge? Say no. Everyone say no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Van V. Okay, I'm sorry. You just got washed. <laughs> this is why I always pull the trigger. <laughs> you regain your level oh, and no. hit points after each night's rest. Okay. My level. Uh, That's pretty okay. decent. So I'd be good. I would have gained 50. Okay. Well, you've just yeah. lost 20. Now I'm down to 38. And it should also Man be noted lives. the room is decompressing, losing oxygen and heat. And oh. there's a hole in the front of the ship. And I was going to say, I have an instant power, obviously, where I can yeah. tangible force construct. Good. Write I'm doing it down that so immediately. That you remember it next time. Doing that immediately. <laughs> Write that down. I'm picturing this God. being like, ooh, a message from Zach. <laughs> it's not and just that, because you're also being lifted into the air yeah. at the same yeah. time. Ragdolled. <laughs> it's also interesting because Minerva is not. Uh, Minerva's on the goose. Yeah, yeah. I oh, yeah. specifically asked. Yeah. Minerva doesn't want to in, uh, interface with the, the with the her. with the nest. <laughs> Sundere uh, Minerva. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> not my ship. I didn't ask for this. <laughs> All right, was let's fun. look over this experience. Imagine uh, if I had died again, you'd be like, Zoe, come save this idiot again. <laughs> I He's missing Qu vital organs. I need you to regrow these. <laughs> Quentin, On Arbor Day. We'll Sorry. get one for Arbor Day. Okay. I think you'd really have to sell me on Fine Psionic Academy. Uh, I explicitly mentioned that as a reason why we should do the thing that we were going to do to know right. about. Sure. All right. Take, this, <laughs> take a second point then. Uh, v, I'll give you a point for work towards speak to Zach. You would really have to sell me on find your mother. Nope, I'll take it. I'm at 71 of 72. Okay. I don't want to level while at hurt HP. I'll get confused. Minerva, <laughs> you get one for get a spike to the hasta. And then everyone gets one for get to the hasta because you are currently in the same system as the hasta. So I Huzzah. did level. Good enough for me. I do level as well. Oh, nine, here it is. Nine. Nine. Well, the great nine. news is, is that when you level, you're going to have to hold off on rolling hit points until after yeah. this fight is over. <laughs> you don't okay. instantly gain more hit points at the start of a fight. That's fair. Understood. <laughs> Initiative. Hold. Do, 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 do. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Maybe I'll just leave my FP at 72 then. Otherwise, I will get very confused when I log it next time. 
It's been an Still episode, over. guys. It's been a 31st episode. Not a fun. Are we not meeting next week? I think you said that earlier. No, I've everything is canceled for the holidays. I've all I I had a show tomorrow night that gets canceled because of holidays, and it isn't even Thanksgiving yet. I specifically uh, cancel everything. Normally it's halfway through December, but it's been just like how Christmas comes earlier. As a result, the date I have to start canceling shows is earlier and earlier because people will be <laughs> like, well, my wife's family's in town and I don't want to make people have to decide between my wife's family's in town at the last second or playing a tabletop RPG. So this is the last episode this year. Gotcha. Okay. For some reason, I thought it was just December that was canceled, but it makes sense after Thanksgiving. Too. It's everything. This is the last tabletop RPG show. It's only going to be <laughs> intro hour and Discord streams of the four games that are nice. Nice. This will be fun, though. I'm pushing hard to get Sidious to do Valheim. Valheim, starting no. this Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving, in theaters near you. <laughs> Not quite. So the thing is, is that there are multiple news reports you all have missed. And some of them you would have gotten if you'd gone the other direction. The other direction. If you'd gone to the southwest, <clears throat> if you've gone down to 0009, oh. you would have gotten different messages and different reports. I gotcha. So I just have to project manager move around the dates at which you will those messages will arrive in the same space as you <sighs> okay next episode could be a big one for you assuming van v isn't dead you could very well get into the hosta and the 32nd episode you will finally achieve the thing you've been trying to do <laughs> since episode one yeah so close so uh, far could you imagine my long-term I... goal Still in die. the future. <laughs> but die this, and you can't get in. Everything is there. This isn't Minerva's long-term goal, though. This is true. She won't isn't get it? any XP for doing this. The reward is the journey itself, and also a heavily armed war cruiser. Fair. With yeah. all of its systems disabled. That will supposedly save Lita and not go evil and kill all the VIs in the entire sector. <laughs> Which is what Man, it feels like is Minerva you're, turning into. You're really leaning into the digital serial killer, aren't you? <laughs> I think I'm we just... all want that one-off episode. Like, after the show's <laughs> over, we just cut back to digital How serial Minerva killer. Minerva hunts down Minerva. everyone. <laughs> we, do, we pick an opportune moment for an alternate timeline episode, and Minerva turns on everyone. <laughs> the, the Moriarty episode. Who survives, <laughs> who doesn't. Just go around and start asking people, hey, have you ever built a VI? Yes. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> okay. Let me just make sure I've noted that 13 is assigned to the captain. And 47 <laughs> is assigned to Van V. And 12 yeah. is assigned to my tree. 12 is in the workshop. No, 12, 12 is now assigned to keeping the tree alive. That is yeah. his primary duty. All right. Crossing out workshop. <laughs> Went in reassigned 12. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's right. I didn't like that one anyways. Hopefully it's a better one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let you know this. They're all exactly the same. I know. <laughs> but, uh, no, the numbers the give them personality. No, they don't. 12 is a good number. Trust me. <laughs> and 13 is... <laughs> <laughs> I just have the unlucky one assigned to the captain. It's no big deal. Routine's good. I just, I really like how, uh, with the way that things went in system and acquiring the ship, and now they're on the way yeah. to Hosta. Minerva's being so moody right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting everything salty. I want, but it's taken forever. <laughs> yeah, salty Minerva. Just like <laughs> technically. So here's the thing, though, Minerva. That the Minerva has to think about, which is that, like, technically, she already paid for the spike drive that uh, exists in Midipile, right? With information, but that that's that that investment's gone. Like, but technically, that that spike drive's Minerva's. It belongs to her. Shouldn't she steal it? 
Go Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying there's a heist episode. <laughs> Minerva would make for some dangerous heist nonsense. Maybe it would this help. sounds like a great way to go from going from the go to team of the perimeter agency to the go to most wanted of the perimeter agency. Yes, this was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> It could be hard to tell with this group or any tabletop role playing game group, but also <laughs> this group fair. in particular. Very fair. Yeah. So now, just I want to double check. Uh, I through lived through the wisest headline. lobster. Let's be clear about that. All right. <laughs> I guess you. Roll ever. <laughs> Who did Fanana go to war with explicitly? It's Robinson. the opposite. Robinson is preparing to go to war or is preparing a war footing with I Fanana see, see. because a Fanana and terrorist group attack one of their admirals during we, we we actually saw it on screen but um they sent an assassin after him now this is of course what robinson is saying is happening right their conclusions are they true did fanana just declare that they're starting to lay down a chassis for a battleship which is not in any way a defensive weapon have your group explicitly caused the two groups to go, hey, the other side is fucking us on this quarantine zone thing. <laughs> I did mention that a while ago. You know. <laughs> Tensions are ramping up quickly. Part of it's you and part of it's just actions that were already in motion. Yeah, they were going to do this anyway. You know, this dance is happening. We just pour you some uh, lighter fluid. That's all. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> it's just so it sound wave posted. Make the spike drive installed, and you guys are like, all right, cool, let's do an ops check, and then the ship winks out of existence. Minerva just bails, takes the hostage, and runs. <laughs> I don't you trust any of you. <laughs> That's a Dude, very harsh but fair BattleTech Alexander Kerensky move right there. <laughs> I'm see you in a thousand years, chumps. Not go home. <laughs> Just wait till you see the technology I come back with. <laughs> it's almost as good as Star League technology. <laughs> what do you mean you don't have double heat sinks, you idiots? No, they just don't have heat. <laughs> what are they, tanks? Playing <laughs> PPCs. Yes. Deal 15. Found a way to build a out of heat. tanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. I don't. I mean, Minerva's very ill prepared to help out with what's going on right now. This one's on Quentin. <laughs> I know, that's why I asked ahead of time. So we didn't establish people just randomly showing up at the scene. <laughs> Rewind the time. It's like. Yeah, you did the Arbor Day thing, and there wasn't any mention of anything else happening, so I don't know if anybody else would have noticed that you had to actually use your communicator to talk to Minerva. You couldn't oh, just speak yeah. out loud on the showman. That's fair. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Good luck, Van Fee. You're in Quentin's <laughs> incredibly capable hands. He's never messed up. I think Van V Perfect probably record. would have noticed that he actually has to do all the piloting for us. <laughs> There's no like, but you don't. Like, though. That's the phantom. Thing. Well, in, in this case, like the like the robots aren't. Actually, um, so I'm picturing when the robots do it, they actually like take over the controls. When Minerva does it, they're they're VIs. Can... They can do it remotely as well. Mm. Well, in this case, I still think. Van V did all the button pushing and you okay. he's used to Minerva just like correcting every now and then what he does. In this case, he was like, This is this is literally all on me. I'm doing it. I'm flying the ship. <laughs> Lieutenant this, Ortega's, I fly the ship. <laughs> this thing is huge and my safety net is oddly missing. <laughs> I forgot to I, before we jumped, I forgot to take in our black solar sail thing. The KF drive solar sail? <laughs> Jesus. We I can't stop that making mistake. battle tech references. Wow. <laughs> it's Solaris Knights too. It's got us hopped up. 
Dun, dun, dun. It should be noted in case anyone is going to leave a comment on it. Uh, the automated support bots are ripped off of Outlaw Strife for 100%. They're Gilliams. Great artists. They borrow. I'll get I'll get you a little uh oh god they're making us they're all right it's making it use the Gilliam two picture but they are normally fully gray here you go <laughs> oh my god <laughs> if you scroll down you can see another picture of it when it's in its deployed state they're adorable. All our star is on Hulu right now. Great show. Great show. Better than Cowboy Bebop. That's a controversial statement. I'm not going to roll for it, though. I'll take the stress. <laughs> I'll just take the stress. <laughs> I'll take the hate for that. It's a lot of fun. I was actually watching someone's top five anime of all time. And number four is I lost star. Or sorry, number four was Cowboy Bebop, and number three is I lost star. I was like, yes, I finally met someone that has the same opinion as me. <laughs> that Outlaw Star is the better one. The one thing I'll say about watching Outlaw Star on Hulu is that uh, the Hot Springs episode was cut from the North American tsunami run. You can get by without it. Your kids and wife should not be in the room when you watch it. <laughs> yeah. It crossed man. some lines back in the day between whether or not something was pornographic. Yeah. <laughs> but shooting wizard guns is sick as hell. It is. That's true. The ships with arms. Uh, yeah, sh grappler ships with arms. I mean, that's 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 Come the on. dream. I always like to imagine. I mean, the golden goose has an arm. I always like I, to imagine yeah. ships with it's, some sort of grappling arm. It's great. That's one of the best parts about that game, Rings of Saturn, is that all the ships have the grappling arm. They're docking. It's thick. It's so good. Well, mm -hmm. any closing closing thought before we? Dismiss ourselves until early January. So far away. Yeah. <laughs> Happy holidays. We'll miss you. I won't miss you, audience. You will. I said this before during vacation. <laughs> catch, it, catch some of us on Blood Bowl. Yay. <laughs> That Blood Bowl League. Yeah, fuck it, man. Why am I... Why... The, the matchups... <laughs> why Why did I not face the number five place team? Why am I facing number three? This is ridiculous. I, I, Luck of the draw. I'm the, really the, curious. The Swiss draw is so weird. <clears throat> Rather than having the, like, number one and two fight each other and then having three and four fight each other, it's doing one versus four, two versus five, three versus six. It's so weird. It's, it's doing it the whole way down, which yeah. really makes me wonder what the hell is it going to do in week two? Because at some point it can't do that again because someone will have already played someone. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm curious how it's going to. I I watched Swiss the intro hour after <laughs> after like it was posted, and you were so I ended up getting who you should have played, <laughs> and it probably is rightfully so because I've been talking a lot of smack about the, the scarabs. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I feel like I could beat the Scarabs. I'm not clear as to whether I can beat Go Hammer. You need... Because they're just uh, going to dodge constantly. It's going to be a real need a, At least one, maybe two really good mercs. Well, I'm getting the, the, the $190,000 merc that James told me is the tackle master with Mighty Blow. And shit. Guess who created that guy? Yeah, well, <laughs> M Muscle Milk or whatever, he's going on yeah. my team. <laughs> and then I'm taking a Fireball Scroll and a random um, uh, random incentive or whatever it's called. I basically created that merc just, just to go against the Gladiators. 
Yeah, I and mean, pass, James pass pretty much said that was what it was for, so he highly suggested I take it. That's where I'm at. It's also anti-gutter rudder, but oh well. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. In two or three uh, skill-ups, that gutter Dawn. rudder is going to be untouchable. Yeah. On two dice, you're going to have a 30.5% chance to knock them down. And if you do hit them, they do move further down the field rather than yeah. wherever you're going to push them. Sidestep is going to uh, ruin my entire strategy in season two, which is pushing people off the pitch. <laughs> or season three, my season two. Yeah. But. I'm here to win. What can I say? <laughs> Friends, Press we'll the opposition. in the next episode, AMV could very well die. The whole ship could suffer a catastrophic... No, that's not true. Only the bridge could suffer a catastrophic failure. Uh, is it murder for hire waiting on the far end? Who can say? Me. I can say. Will I say? No. Uh, yeah, at least not this year. <laughs> can you imagine if, if we I know. Next changed time. our negotiation to Johnson to say, can you send a fleet with us? We appear, this thing happens, and Johnson's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Way too late to change that. <laughs> yeah. This was always going to happen the next time you went to a black hole system, though. I uh, Yeah, I've been nervous. <laughs> I guess yeah. better here than, I can't read the number, but whatever the one on the top right Who is. Who should Quentin six, resurrect? resurrect? Yeah, that one. Minerva is so close and so far away. <laughs> but if Van V dies, oh well. <laughs> he is actively trying to kill you so that your name will be said. Mm -hmm. Free him of this bargain that he has been entered into against his will. Him? The shadow? Yeah. You summoned him. I, you asked him for I this did favor. Not. He came to me and... And literally asked if there was a favor, and uh, mm -hmm. Quentin uh, essentially. I mean, I understand how this works. Just sort of, I'm just <laughs> at least just at flippantly, <laughs> offhandedly said, can't, "You can't bring people back from the dead." And this thing says, "Who do you wish?" <laughs> at least Minerva knows that if my body dies somewhere, there's a dust speck floating around that can be captured that you yeah. can't see can't I'm, hear, I'm imagining can't the really, i'm imagining the really awkward conversation like you get your torso gets torn apart you are super dead <laughs> like zoe looks at the floating bits of corpsicle and goes yeah no and minerva makes the odd request of can i have his head <laughs> <laughs> i just need, i just need the brain <laughs> you need a vacuum cleaner with a <laughs> very true. fine filter setting Please, please keep the the hull sealed, Quentin, while we vacuum up all the dust specks in this room. <laughs> I like that you think you're not going to be outside the ship if you die. There's a hole in the front end of the ship. That's we need. We need Quentin to keep that sealed with psionicness. It's going to happen. Don't worry. Yes. We'll see if he does it in the first round of. What combat. happens if half my dust specks go out? Are <laughs> instant. So at the very least, if you do get sucked out, you can survive, probably. I like how you freeze? only just asked the question, what if half of my dust specs? I've been wondering it for a while, because oh, when you said, yeah. uh, like when you said, uh, um, God, the has a power rating level, yes. Yeah, yeah. his DBZ scale was indicating half. <laughs> so. Vegeta. What uh, Mega sixty four <laughs> just did the Saiyan Saga today. They just released their Saiyan Saga skit in five minutes, covering the first arc of Dragon Ball Z. It is oh. <laughs> bad in a good way. Fair. What is this power level? Somewhere between eight and ten thousand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it All would right, be guys. really weird project Minerva on the side working with your children's toy to try to find a way to speak to you while you're trapped in your dust. Wow. That's creepy. Yeah. That's right. a sad future. 
Well, speaking of the sad future, I guess we'll see you then, Space Cowboys.